Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're in the fish room. Going to try and make some progress at last. So, if you've been following along, I've been building a fish room in my garage. This is it. We've basically built a 12-ish foot wall this way, a wall going down here, uh, plastering it, halfway through plastering on the other side. Injured my shoulder, um, both shoulders actually. It kind of got hung up, so I couldn't really get any further. My shoulders are still repairing, but I can at least move things around, but I'm not up to plastering. Can't finish off the plastering. Can't get a plasterer that's got any free time. I'm just looking for a solution to finish this off so as I can continue with the fish room build at least. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be nice. I just want it covered with something. So the only, the only reason I want to cover this is because I don't want it to get wet because it will inevitably get splashed. And if I just leave it as bare plasterboard, um, it will just start to rot and disintegrate. I think if I just painted it, I think I'd give it a little bit more protection. But I have had an idea. This is either the dumbest thing I've ever done, or it's a stroke of genius. Past experience would probably suggest it's the dumbest thing I've ever done, but we'll give it a go anyway. So, I was in B&M, or Home Bargains, or one of those places, and I came across packets of these. Um, I've had these on my floor before, I've used them to put tanks on because they give a little bit of cushioning. Um, but they're quite cheap. They're waterproof and they're light, so I can actually get in and put them up. Now they're meant to be a floor covering, but why couldn't they be a wall covering? Um, it'll protect it from water, so anything splashing will just run off. Should be easy to put up with some adhesive. I don't care what it looks like all that much. I'm gonna try it, so. You're now about to watch a man embark on either the stupidest thing he's ever done or a stroke of genius. The plan of attack here is basically just to rub down, we're gonna put this filler in, make it nice and smooth, and then I've got a few cans of this spray adhesive, a little bit on the plasterboard, a little bit on the back of the tile. Whack it on, job done. I mean, the jury's not out, but this might not be the dumbest thing I've ever done. It's sticking pretty well. I'm using this spray adhesive on both sides, but I've also got um, timber running down there, so I can put screws into timber just to properly hold it in. But it kind of looks like it's doing the job. I'll do a bit more, and then you can back and have a look and see. Okay, I've gone through about three packs, I think. And I've done this corner area, so I've done this wall, still got some finishing off down the bottom to do, but I've done this wall and started on that wall. What I've learned is the adhesive, the adhesive is pretty much useless. It's good for getting started and sticking, but it doesn't seem to hold it on with any great reliability, but it's good to tack it up there while you hold it, so I've just ended up screwing into it, using a load of drywall screws, um, and that seems to be working really well. It's, I quite like the finish, I don't know if you can tell what the, the camera's saying here, but it's given a little bit of a um, insane asylum look, <laughs> padded cell. Uh, but I quite like the finish. It's a nice padded wall, it's going to be waterproof, water will just run off it. So far so good. But we'll see how we get on with the rest of the wall, we'll get that finished up, and then at least we can get the racks in place and start moving, well, 
then we can think about whether we want to have racks on this side or mega tank on this side. I'm still undecided. I think I can fit the racks in. Um, I've done some more measuring and it's like with millimetres to spare so I don't know if this the tolerance might be put off by just having this thickness here but we'll see. Um, I kind of like the idea of having the racks here now but oh God, depending on what day it is I change my mind so let's get this finished off. There we go. Knackered my arm again but it's done. Uh, I quite like it. Quite happy with this. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me being happy in a padded cell. Uh, but yes, finishes the wall off nicely. I quite, I quite like this. It's going to do great. So the next job is this rack here. I need to get all the stuff off it so I can move it around and we can check whether or not two racks fit in here. Um, so I just don't trust my measuring skills. <laughs> I think it will fit. I think it will fit by maybe one or two millimetres spare so we'll see but for now I need to go and rest the arm and see how we get on but yeah quite happy with that right I've had to give it a couple of days for recovery it's going to be slow progress with this bleeding arm or shoulders but anyway we're back in the fish room fish are looking excited they can see some progress so Humphrey here looking happy wanting to chew my fingers off but anyway got the walls done, uh, I'm classing that as a splash barrier rather than a spill barrier but I do want to protect the walls because I, I will make spills, I will flood the place, it's inevitable and what I want to stop is the water going up against the walls and then creeping up the back of the walls and then going all mouldy and stuff like that so I bought this stuff, comes in a big roll um, ideally I'd have got something that was a little bit thicker but I'm going to use it for a dual purpose to do both the floors and the corners um, it's basically it just kind of bends into a 90 degree angle and I'm going to just stick that to the floor, tuck it up underneath the black plus the black um, wall coverings and that should give me a barrier so if I silicone under here no water can get under and get behind and creep up and that should protect against all but the most massive of floods anyway I'll show you what I mean so the idea is you just kind of form this into shape. I've cut this roughly to the the length of this wall here. Is it meant to do that? No, that's fine. No, no, it's not meant to do that. Lesson number one, don't bend it the wrong way. So I'll still show you with this, but this is now a scrap piece of material. You bend it into a 90 degree. It holds its form where you haven't snapped it. And then it just kind of sits like this with the piece that's on the floor siliconed in and the piece that goes up the wall tucked behind the wall covering. And then I can get it to be the, the dual purpose of using it as a corner piece to finish off the edges and hide any of the nastiness that I've got there. And I think that will work quite well. And it's not going to serve much of a purpose here other than just finishing it off, but yeah, I'll be happy with that. And um, probably just screw it in here. But yeah, this bit's knackered now because I'm an idiot. We knew that already though, didn't we? So I like to maintain a totally amateur professional, even though I'm using a chest freezer as a workbench and an angle grinder to cut a little bit of plastic. But you know, half power tools will travel. I guess really we should be using something like a little hacksaw or something like that. But this will do the job just as easily. more easily. So this is the stuff that we've got. I've already forgotten which way it bends. Ah yes, so it bends with the crease in. Don't know why I thought it would be anything else. I just kind of form it into shape. I'm going to get my silicone cock gun out cock gun, slide it into place. That should do the job nicely, I think. I'm sure there are better ways, cleverer, smarter ideas. I'm not a better, cleverer, smarter kind of guy, so we're gonna use what we've got. And I think this will do just fine.
Looks pretty good. I'm unsure whether to just put a bead of silicon here or fix it in place because it's pretty sturdy as it is. Hard to move that. But we'll get it, get it in and then decide. Right, that's it in. I've not siliconed it yet. I'm just going to go underneath Put a big fat blob of silicone across the bottom once I've cleaned it up. Let that cure, that'll give me a watertight barrier at the very bottom at least. Looks alright, I think. I'm kind of regretting throwing out all my old offcuts of pond liner because that was the first thought I had was use old pond liner. That would have been really cheap, that would have been really easy, um, but this stuff will work just as well. Hurts like a. Hurts like a bad word. So thankfully, I've had a mercy call from the guys over at Fishman Aquatics, so they're coming out next week to help me out and get things finished off. So make sure you click that subscribe button, you might see a bit more faster action as we get things into some kind of order. But we'll finish this off. We've got all the walls covered, the bottom seals, we'll call them that, they're all sealed. Use two and a bit tubs of silicon or squirt guns of silicon to get them all sealed, just squish them down, let them dry off. It's not going to be perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect and it isn't meant to be perfect. It's meant to be good enough. So this is going to provide me with some splash cover. I know the purists out there will be saying yes, but if you don't seal all these gaps, water can get in. Yes, I know. Um, it's meant to be splash cover, so that's that's what it's there for. It should do that job quite well, and then water shouldn't get in underneath and seep up. We'll see how it goes. I'd hope to get a little bit further, I must admit. I'd hope to get the other stand built, uh, get that in here, or at least check whether it fits in here. But we haven't quite got around to that yet. It's just... I don't want to sound like I'm constantly moaning, because I'm constantly moaning. It's slow progress, I just can't get things done. Sore shoulders and all that. But I do have help coming, so hopefully the next update video in here, you'll see a lot more. But I mentioned I had the Fishman Aquatics team, hopefully they're coming out next week to give me a hand and get some kind of order and shape into this place. Uh, most of them will be using them for heavy lifting, hope they're aware of that. <laughs> um, but it'd be nice to see them, nice to get some opinions on what to do, where, some ideas, throw them around, and just get things, at least the basic setup with all tanks, ready to put water in, ready to put extra fish in. You may notice this tank here is empty, so we've definitely got some new fish coming. I'm hoping to go tonight and see some more of those new fish. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to see what they are, but they will be more of my favourite fish. Um, so we'll hopefully do a bit of an update video of me going to have a look at some of these fish, bringing them back, and you can see the ones that I get. The ones that we've got at the moment still all doing well. Just a bit frustrated still at lack of progress, but hopefully we'll get there soon. Anyway, thank you for your time. I hope this wasn't too much of a nothing video, but I thought this is the reality of building a fish room sometimes, especially when you're carrying an injury. Things aren't always exciting. You have to do the boring stuff first before you get to the good stuff. But we'll see. Hopefully we'll have a better update next time. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye!